and I'm so grateful for all of the no's I've ever received because they stopped me from going to places that I wasn't meant to go. Any black girl who's tried to model in Cape Town will tell you this for a fact. You become a specialist in rejection. <laughs> what you do all day is rejection. Uh, imagine going for at least 10 job interviews every single day of your life and being turned down for all of them. Well, maybe getting one a month. We loved fashion, we wanted, we, we wanted to be models. You know when you're so passionate about something and every door just keeps shutting in your face and all you ever hear is no. Um, I, I became very used to hearing the word no. Um, but something in me just kept going. Uh, there's one particular no that I'll never forget. All the other no's are kind of a blur, you know. That's what no's do. That's what rejection does. At some point, it's, it's, it's all the same. It's just one big kind of blur. But there's always the one rejection that you remember because it's a destiny shaper. Um, and, and I'll never forget that moment, you know. I, I was nominated for an award at um, the, they're called the NAMAs, the National Arts Merit Awards in Zimbabwe. And oh, wow, I remember getting the nomination. It was a public vote, so I went all out. I went all out. I got my friends to vote. I set up Twitter accounts. I went all out. I spent money. I mean, I, I was determined to do this. I knew I could do this, and I was determined to do it well. And when it came to the night of the awards, I, I was excited. I was anticipating, and um, I was supposed to present an award at the show as well. So I remember getting there and um, getting backstage and one of the guys who was working at, at the show came to me and he's, he was excited. He said, ooh, and it was my birthday as well. I'll never forget that. And he came to me and he said, I'm excited for you. And I said, well, I said, we've got a birthday present for you. So I'm like, did I win? And he said, you won. So I was excited. I was just trying to contain myself. So, you know, even when I presented the award and all of that, I, you know, it was all just kind of protocol for me. You know what I mean? I was getting geared up for my big moment. Boy, so I remember I presented the award. I came back into the audience and I waited for my category. And my category was towards the end. And I waited. And I waited. And I waited. It, it never came. The show ended, um, they closed the ceremony and I'm just, what happened? So I then went backstage and I said, well, what, what happened? They never announced my category, you know, what, what happened? And they said, oh, they decided to remove the category. Why, why would they remove the whole category? I don't understand. I said, well, somebody wasn't happy with the winner. Oh. I don't know how to explain how I felt in that very moment. It, it, it was a broken feeling and um, uh, I, I didn't drive at the time, I didn't have a car. Um, I, I'd taken a cab to the event and there's a lady who lived close to me who says, oh, you know, let's ride home together because we live in the same neighborhood. So we did that, we rode home together and in the car I was telling her that, oh, I'm so sad. I couldn't tell her why I was sad and I just said, I'm so low. And she said, why? And I said, cool, because I feel like I'll never become what I want to become. I feel like this environment is not allowing me to be who I need to be. And she told me very simply, she said, Sudi, this is all you've got, so you've got to make it work. And she talked me down. I'll never forget this conversation. She talked me down. She just said, all these dreams you've got, like, cancel them. You, it's, it's never going to happen for you, not for you. This is, this is it. This is our life. So climatize to it and if you feel like you can do better then why don't you change this place? But you know, beyond this place you're nobody. <laughs> and um, I, I, it, it was piercing, it was painful. It was, it was the most painful no I've, I've ever received in my life. But you know what? It's the greatest blessing that's ever happened to me. Because I remember from that moment I was so committed to getting out of there. From that moment I was so determined to prove her wrong and to prove everybody else wrong. And to do things that people had never done before and, and to stand out to be a person with a difference. You know what I mean? So I, I, I remember on that day I made the decision that no matter what it took, I was gonna get out. I, I left my country with $200 in my pocket. Um, it, it was that or nothing, do you know what I mean? I went to crash on a friend's couch. I'm sure my friend didn't even know that uh, <laughs> I had nothing and I didn't know where I was going. I just made it out like I knew what I was doing. What I wanna share today is the blessing that is a no. And I'm so grateful for all of the no's I've ever received because they stopped me from going to places that I wasn't meant to go. That's what I love about a no and that's what I wish we could all learn to love about no's is that they stop us from going to places that we're not meant to go. I just want us to appreciate no. I want us to appreciate every single time we are turned down and rejected, the person's doing you a favor. 
the person's actually doing you a favor because they're actually telling you that, guess what, you're right. You don't belong here. You belong somewhere else with your destiny. So uh, it, next time somebody tells you no, just say thank you. Thank you, boo-boo. Thank you. <laughs> and appreciate the no's and use every no as a time to sit, reflect, and redirect. <laughs>